Hello, uh, we're going to solve problem number one. Uh, given f of x is equal to five over x minus one, and g of x is equal to four over three x minus two, and we need to find the domain, the range of f and g, and the domain of f circle g. So let's start with uh, finding the domain of f and g. So we have f of x is equal to five over x minus one. So in this case, since this is a rational expression or a rational function and the numerator is constant and the denominator, uh, it has a variable x. So uh, the, the function is possible to be undefined. Now it becomes undefined when x minus one is equal to zero as uh, based on the definition of undefined, wherein a over zero is undefined when uh, for when a is not equal to zero. Okay, so here uh, we don't want x minus one to be zero for f x to be defined. So here x is not equal to one. So therefore, the domain of f is equal to uh, the set x, which is an element of real numbers such that x is not equal to one. So this is the domain for f of x. Now let's solve for the domain, domain of g of x, which is g of x equals four over three x minus two. And again, uh, the function uh, g of x is a rational function and the numerator is constant and the denominator is expressed as three x minus two where the variable is present. So therefore, uh, we don't want this g of x to be undefined. That's why three x minus two or the denominator should not be equal to zero. Okay, and uh, g of x can never be indeterminate because uh, the numerator is four. Okay, and there is no uh, variable on the numerator as well. And it can never be imaginary since there's no radical, uh, radical expression or there's no uh, uneven index uh, of a, a radical uh, expression. So here, let's just consider the undefined uh, expression in G of X. So three X minus two is not equal to zero and let's solve for X. So X is not equal to two over three. That's why uh, we know that the domain of G is equal to the set x, which is an element of real numbers, such that x is not equal to two thirds. So these are the domain of f and g, okay? Now let's consider or let's solve for the range of the functions f and g. Okay, let's go to the next uh, slide. So we have Let's just rewrite the function. Uh, the functions are f of x is equal to, uh, let's go back five over x minus one, five over x minus one, and our g of x is equal to four over three x minus two, if I'm not mistaken, so let's check. 4x, uh, 4 over 3x minus 2, that's correct. So now let's solve for letter B. Letter B is range. So we're solving for the range of the two functions f and g. So here, let's solve first the, the function f of x. So let's consider f of x is equal to 5 over x minus 1. So to solve for uh, the range of the function, then we need to, uh, the, the procedure for us to do this is to, uh, one of the techniques to find the range of the function is to swap or we let f of x be y. So this becomes y is equal to five over x minus one. And we swap the position of x and y. So the y becomes x and the x becomes y. So five over y minus one, and let's solve for y in terms of x. So this becomes x times 
y minus 1 equals 5. And let's solve for y. So y minus 1 equals 5 over x. And y is equal to 5 over x minus 1. Or this is equivalent to or equal to 5 minus x over uh, x, right? So again, uh, this function is equal to uh, yeah, this is equal to y equals 5 minus x over x. And uh, let's determine the values of x here. Okay, now this is an example of a rational expression or a rational uh, equation. And there's a chance that this uh, equation becomes undefined and it becomes undefined when the denominator is zero. So therefore, x is not, should not be equal to zero or else the function would be undefined, okay? So in this case, uh, the range would be, the range of the function f, the range of the function f is equal to y, which is an element of real numbers such that uh, y is not equal to zero. So this is our um, range for the function f of x. Okay, and if we're going to check, now here, this is the function f of x. Now, uh, it is impossible for f of x or for the value of the function f of x be zero, whatever the value of x here is, okay? As long as x is not equal to one, all right? So let's proceed to finding the range of the function g of x. So since we don't have space anymore, let's go to the next slide. So four over three x minus two. So g of x is equal to four over three x minus two. So letter B, let's solve for the range. Okay, so uh, here g of x, uh, here we will be using the technique or method that we uh, perform in f of x in finding the range. So. Here, uh, let's uh, express g of x in terms of y. So 4 over 3x minus 2. And again, let's swap the position of y and x. So y becomes x. And 4 over 3x, or the x becomes y minus 2. And solve for y in terms of x. So here, uh, we can cross multiply by three uh, or multiply both sides by three y minus two is equal to four. And uh, I can I can distribute x here, three x y minus two x is equal to four and three x y is equal to two x plus four, transposing two x to the other side and dividing both sides by 3x since we're solving for the y. So y is equal to 2x plus 4 over 3x. Okay, so in this case, uh, we need, uh, since the equation is irrational, is irrational, then there's a chance that this equation becomes undefined since the denominator is or has a variable x. So we restrict uh, this function to be undefined. That's why we have 3x is not equal to 0, which means x is not equal to 0. Now, uh, let's go back to the equation. This equation can never be undefined, uh, sorry, uh, indeterminate, because uh, we can never find a value of x such that the numerator becomes 0, and at the same time, the denominator is 0, too or we cannot express this equation into a complex number since there is no uh, radical expression with a, an even index, okay? So therefore, uh, we can now write our final answer or the range of the function, okay? Or g of x, I mean, so that's g of x, oops. 
okay? Wherein it is y is an element of rational numbers such that y is not equal to zero. So here, uh, the value of the function can never have a zero value because uh, there will be no such x here, okay? No such value of x such that this expression or the left hand side, the right hand side rather, uh, would be zero. That's why this is the range, oh, this is the range of g, okay? So uh, here we go. Now, we already solved the domain in the range of the, the functions f and g. And for letter C, we're now going to determine the domain, the domain of F circle G. Okay. Now to determine the domain of the F circle G, uh, we need to determine the, the domain of G first and get the intersection with the domain of the F circle G prime. The prime here is the one that we are going to get once we perform the F circle G or the composite function. Okay, so let's solve. Now again, our F of X is equal to, let's go back and check what the value of F of X is. Okay, five over X minus one. Okay, five over x minus one, and g of x is equal to four over three x minus two, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so uh, we have already solved uh, the the domain of the domain of g. Okay, and we said that the domain is, uh, the domain of g is uh, x, which is an element of real numbers such that. Uh, x is not equal to one, All right? We avoid this function to be zero, I mean, to be undefined. So we restrict the denominator to be zero. So we need to identify the uh, composite function uh, of uh, f and g or f circle g. So that's f circle g is equal to f of, okay, the value of, g, which is 3x minus 2, all right? And substitute this number or this expression to all the g, uh, to all the x in f. So that's 5 over uh, 4 over 3x minus 2 uh, minus 1. So ethion, this one. So let's simplify our expression. So we have... 5 over equals uh, 4 minus 1 times 3x minus 2 over 3x minus 2. Okay, and let's simplify. So 5 times 3x minus 2 over 4 minus 3x plus 2. And simplify again. This becomes 15x minus 10 over 3x minus, ah, sorry, minus 3x plus 6. So this is our uh, f circle g. Okay. And, okay, so we already uh, found the f circle g, uh, which is 15x minus 10 all over negative 3x plus 6. So let's identify the domain of uh, f circle g the domain of f circle g. So again, uh, f circle g is a rational function. So uh, it is possible for this function to be undefined uh, when the denominator is zero, right? So we restrict the denominator to be zero to restrict the function to be undefined. And uh, for this denominator to become zero, we Put it in this manner, so not equal to zero. So we solve for x, x is equal, not equal to, I mean, uh, what? That's two, x is not equal to two. Therefore, 
uh, the domain of F circle G is X is an element of real numbers such that X is not equal to two. So this is our, uh, the domain of uh, F circle G, okay? So now let's now identify the domain of F of G. Okay, with the use of the D prime of, or the domain prime of F circle G. So let's go to the next slide. So our domain of F circle G is equal to the domain of X, uh, or oh, domain of G rather, intersection the D prime of F circle G. So we have, the domain of G is, let's go back. The domain of G, oops. The domain of G is all real numbers except negative, uh, except two thirds. Okay, so that's, uh, X is an element of real numbers except X two thirds intersection and the D prime or the domain prime of F circle G is all real numbers except two. So here, X is an element of real numbers except two or except, sorry. It should be slant except two. Oh, or we could express that in this manner such that X is not equal to two. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I used the wrong term. So uh, let's get the intersection of this. Now we could easily identify the intersection if we're going to uh, convert or express this into a, an interval notation. So this becomes, uh, let's convert this to interval notation. This is equal to the negative infinity to uh, two thirds, okay, union, two thirds to positive infinity, all right? And intersect with, and this uh, set notation can be expressed into an interval notation. So that's negative infinity to two, union to two positive infinity. Okay, so let's get the intersection of this. So we have here, okay, since two third is less than two, so we have negative infinity to two thirds and union two thirds to to two and union to two positive infinity. So we have the domain of the composite function of F, G and G is from negative infinity to two thirds, union with two thirds to two, union with two, two positive infinity. So this is our final answer. Thank you.